hello everyone this is the training about linear time history analysis a part of medas training series i hope you will enjoy the training so so to begin with we'll first have a look at why and where linear time history study is required so if the inertia and damping effect are important then such structures need to be studied for the effect of dynamic loads examples of such structures would be say machine mounted on a frame structure or a pedestrian bridge in such structures if the frequency of vibration is closer to the natural frequency of the structure then as you know resonance may happen and this would ultimately lead to heavy damage to the structure even the effect of explosion near the structures could be studied with linear time history method so these kind of systems could be solved by modal superposition method wherein loading at certain frequencies would generate higher response from the structure while some other frequencies the response would not be uh, quite high so using the modal method instead of performing calculation and obtaining exact solution calculations are performed for frequencies which give the maximum response this is represented by the mode shape of the structure a fairly accurate generalized displacement could be obtained by modal method mode superposition analysis is effective when response lies in a few modes only and the response is to be obtained over many time intervals so the aim of this method is to reduce the number of calculations as compared to the direct integration method and the dynamic equilibrium equations are transformed into more effective form of solution so if you look at the image the maximum response is being generated uh, by say uh, the time period between 0.5 to 1.5 the ratio of frequencies that is so most of the participation will happen in that and that would could be studied by the modal method other method to solve such system of equations is by direct integration method when direct integration method is chosen midas adopts the newmarks method to perform the analysis the initial set of conditions are known and this helps in getting the values at the next time step the solution that could be obtained using newmarks method is as given here so the given equation is the equation of motion at particular initial uh, interval and with the time increment what we seek is what is happening at the next time increment that is by the seek equation so using the newmarks method these intervals could be obtained uh, rather sorry these parameters could be obtained as shown in the equations below where gamma and beta are newmark parameters uh, parameters we would be considering modal superposition method for this session the type of time history load that could be applied are transient loads and periodic load so for transient load it is adopted that uh, for the cases where the time varying load is applied only once for example earthquake load or impact load the image on the right is for the impact transient loading and the second is the periodic load so this method, uh, method is adopted for cases where the varying load is applied as time forcing function repeatedly that is some force is always acting in the system to maintain the uh, vibration example of such would be machine vibration as well as pedestrian loads so time input and its significance for any time history analysis the required time based inputs are the end time of load application time increment and steps at which the output is required let us consider a simple time forcing function as shown in the image below it can be noted that the period of one cycle is 2 seconds and time so that is basically the time input 
until which the analysis is performed and for the image shown below minimum end time to consider all the forces that would be acting is two seconds the end time entered should be a multiple of period of time forcing function or period of structure whichever is smaller time increment so time increment significantly affects the accuracy of the results a common rule of thumb uh, for determining the time increment is to use at least one tenth of the smaller of the period of forcing function or the natural frequency of the structure so minimum increment going by that would be 0.2 seconds in this case uh, however an increment of 0.1 is adopted uh, i'll explain later why and step number for output so it determines the time at which the results would be saved okay so if you look at the image at the top uh, the force plot of periodic function is uh, provided where tp is the time period for modeling this function its end time if it is kept less than tp then Midas will consider the loading as shown in the image below. Now, if you can notice the peak force that itself is not considered when the time period is kept less. Okay. So as I said, the peak res uh, response itself could be missed. So end time should be, I repeat, a multiple of time period of forcing function and the period of forcing function should be multiple of the time increment. Okay, so this is the response for uh, the given forcing function. So here the effect of time increment could be noted. Had it been kept at 0.2 seconds, then look at the green line over here. So with 0.2 seconds of increment, the response would be noted at 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 seconds. However, given the forcing function the maximum response itself was happening at 0 0.5 seconds so if the increment is kept of 0.2 seconds then the peak response could be missed as shown over here this is the peak response which could be missed this straight line So the red line that is being shown over here, this red line, it is the case where time increment as well as step of output are small. It can be noted that peak maximum and minimum response are recorded along a smooth curve with this input. The blue line is a line directly connecting the peaks. This was happening because the input had time increment of 0.1 second. However, the results were being saved at five step increment so the results were being saved at each 0.5 seconds so all the 0.5 second increment results have been connected by the blue line the green line has time increment of 0.2 seconds uh, though the results have been saved at each step it can be noted in the zoomed image that with this input the peak output is missed and for the yellow line the time increment was 0.1 second however the step increment was kept at 10 so the result was being saved at each second and that's why you can notice the yellow line it is very close to the zero moment result so now the damping which could be applied so by modal damping method the general damping coefficients could be applied to all the modes if different damping coefficient need to be assigned to certain mode then that can also be done then mass and stiffness proportional damping it is a viscous damping which is proportional to linear combination of mass and stiffness this type of uh, damping helps avoid the non-conservative over damping of high or low frequency response in the structure system so basically it can be seen that different damping could be applied to different modes and hence it can be said that Rayleigh damping is a subclass of the complete modal damping 
here nu and lambda are the mass and stiffness proportional Rayleigh damping coefficients. In the image on the right, the red line is the stiffness proportional uh, damping. The green line is mass proportional and it can be noted that the blue line is summation of both that is mass and stiffness proportional damping. Besides that, there is strain energy proportional damping. So damping for each mode is auto calculated by the software using the damping input for different element groups and boundary groups. And this has been covered in the earlier sessions. So this could be useful when different material has been used in the uh, model and the damping needs to be auto calculated. time forcing functions uh, so the different types that are available are normalized acceleration acceleration force moment and normal so force and moment functions could be applied for dynamic nodal load option the normal function could be used for defining time varying static loads and acceleration and normal acceleration functions could be applied for ground acceleration time history that is for support excitation. So for this the values could either be user defined that is manually you could enter the time versus magnitude values or use predefined earthquake time histories that are available in the software. The other option is sinusoidal function. So wherein you have to enter the parameters as shown in the image that is your initial force your increment or decrement in force the number of cycles that you want per second the damping as well as the phase angle to perform periodic linear analysis of frame structure due to say machine vibration uh, force or moment type function could be used for dynamic nodal loads The equation of motion for periodic function is as shown over here where P0 is the initial load Omega is the angular frequency of the loading function T is the particular time instance uh, The displacement with such force function could be obtained as Amplitude into sine of Omega T wherein amplitude is obtained by the equation as shown over here u small u is the displacement at any particular time instance and c is the damping of the particular system now we'll apply what we have studied so far to a model and verify the theory so consider the following problem statement uh, a beam section of size 0.1 meter by 1 meter uh, it's a cantilever beam uh, time forcing function is applied at the free end of the cantilever the total length of the beam is 5 meter. Uh, elasticity of the material assumed is as shown on the screen. Uh, it has been considered as the system is free of damping, the idealized system. The mass considered at the free end of cantilever is 1 kN per g, where g is the gravity. P0 or A, which has been used for this sinusoidal forcing function, is minus 10 kN. The loading frequency or F is 0.5 cycles per second. It can be noted that one uh, cycle of loading is taking two seconds. Uh, phase angle as well as C and D for the sinusoidal parameters have been kept at zero. So the aim is to find the displacement and acceleration at interval of 0.25 seconds for one complete cycle. So using the equations we studied, uh, we can easily calculate the displacement as well as the nodal acceleration for a system which is free of damping. And same can be easily simulated in the software. The plot at the bottom right is that of acceleration and displacement variation at the tip of the cantilever with time. Uh, it can be noted that the signs are opposite. That is when the amplitude is maximum uh, for at say 0.5 seconds, negative maximum. So at that time the acceleration is positive maximum. So that is as expected because after that time the beam would be moving in the opposite direction. So obviously its amplitude would be reducing and it will have acceleration in the other direction. Okay, 
so using the formula so we have seen so far manually the force uh, as well as the displacement and acceleration had been calculated and the same had been simulated in the software it could be noted that the values are almost same a periodic case has been studied so far a similar application is possible for earthquake time history function to a multiple degree of freedom system as well the difference from the case studied would be the loading would be transient in the earlier case the loading was periodic so for the given earthquake time history the acceleration as well as displacement at different times could be considered by the model superposition method so these acceleration and displacement plots as well as the forcing function plots that are being shown are for the El Centro earthquake, which had been applied for a MDOF system shown earlier. So hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you very much for your attention.